Welcome to a review with a brew. Today's blend is oolong, and that's a China tea. Another NG, you say? Yes, but this has something different. This may well be another ZS, but it's got a six-speed manual box coupled to that one litre. Now, the MG ZS first appeared back in 2017. Yeah, before that, there was the MG era of cars, little sporty numbers that everybody still loves. But this, this was a new beginning, as it were. An SUV, and it was under the Psych brand. We were actually there to attend the launch. This brand that gave us, well, the opportunity to start Planet Auto on a whole new level. MG gave us our first two vehicles, the GS, followed by the three. We've had so many ZS's on the channel. Everything from the petrol variants through to the electric. We've even done road trips all over the country, including up and down from Goodwood. I suppose the question you're asking yourself is, how does this differ to the other model that we had around a year ago? Well, there's three things that stand out. You've got a six-speed manual box, you've got a panoramic sunroof, and you've got an old-school handbrake. The automatic comes with an electronic handbrake. Now the prices have increased since launch, but that makes sense. But the bottom line is you can pick a ZS up for as little as 16495 If you go for our model, well that'll cost you 20840 But that's in Battersea Blue with the one litre and the six speed manual. Now if you want to really top out, then you're looking at the exclusive with the one litre automatic. And that'll cost you 21850 with say Battersea Blue paint. The bottom line is, it's still extremely good value. The amount of comments that we've had on our reviews is unbelievable. There was only a handful of people that had belief in Psyche putting out an MG brand. And look at them now. If you're looking at the pre-facelift, this has been far more refined. Shaping in the lights, you even get things like LED lights. Now the one thing about the petrol variants is, you don't get MG Pilot that you see on the ZS EV. But you do get things like cross-traffic monitoring, collision detection, that I'll have a look at later. Prominent MG badge, big grille, and some rather aggressive looks. And a lovely touch, the brushed effect around the grille. You've got automatic lights, you've got rain sensing wipers. But one thing you don't have is front parking sensors. Wheels, well these are 17s, but you can choose from a range of styles. We've got a higher profile tyre, which makes it comfy on-road and off-road. Yes, it's not four-wheel drive, it would be nice to see one of those, and I think they have one in Australia. But the two-wheel drive's pretty capable anyway. High ride height, you've even got doors that cover the sills. Power folding door mirrors. Another essential feature, especially for motorway driving, blind spot detection. You've got satin roof rails, and yes, you can carry about 75 kilos on that. Sloping roof line, splashes of chrome, and the one thing that you always notice about an MG, no privacy glass, but you can get it aftermarket, so that's that solved. And front and rear discs, the front being vented. The styling from the rear is far more distinct than it was. For example, you've got like the wrap around here. These are also LED. Big centralized MG badge. The rear diffuser just gives it that sporty look. Yet again, a mix of finishes. Chromes, satin black, even gloss black. The thing is, it doesn't look overdone. It's got more of an identity of its own now than it did when it first launched. Tech-wise, 360 degree camera, cross-traffic monitoring and parking sensors. Rear spoiler, high-level brake light and a good old B sting aerial. And don't forget, with every MG you get a seven-year warranty. As we've got the exclusive trim, we've got keyless entry and keyless go. As long as you've got the key on your person, you just press this button. And voila! Decent door opening, and yeah, you do have hard plastics at the top of the door, but the rest of it, a well-finished door card, sporty materials here, and also the brushed effect that you see on the front grille. I like what I see. Nice and simple to get in with that raised ride height. No grab handle. Oh well. Leather wrapped steering wheel. Yet again, because we've got the exclusive, we get a full digital cluster. And yes, they've kept the retro vents. The interiors just keep improving. Soft touches everywhere, stitching, sporty finishes. Yeah, you will find hard plastic, surprisingly, at the top of the door. But everything else is just, well, it's enveloped in this faux leather. 
buckety seats. It's electrically adjusted. And I think this one's six way and that one's four way. MG embossed on the headrests. Look at my height as well, 6'3", and it's absolutely no problem. Comfortable, driving position, great. Padded armrest, decent leg room. The one thing that is missing from the ZS is there's no reach in the steering wheel. But you do have height adjustment. What's not to love? Now, as soon as you dig a bit deeper, you'll see that the ZS has got lots of toys, everything from descent control through to the 360 camera. Now the infotainment screen, tastefully fitted to be honest. It's not stuck out a mile and it's nice and easy to reach. And the one thing is there's no rotary dial and it's not the fastest system, very intuitive. You can set all your car's settings in here. You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and DAB radio. It does everything it needs to and it has navigation. Shortcut buttons, switch gear feels good. It really does. Delve a bit deeper into the HVAC and you can see all the buttons. Yes, we do have heated seats, but there's no physical button for them. You reach them by clicking this, voila. And then it would be nice to see that completely overhauled. But I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel big time. Everything else is just, in a word, good. You release your petrol cap there and your bonnet pops there. If you want to adjust your headlamp height, that's there. If you need to fold your door mirrors in, just literally push this down. So there are a few changes from the automatic, namely six speed manual, old school handbrake and a panoramic. Let's go back to the box. I do love a lovely short shift. I'll speak more about that in the driving section, but on top, trimmed nicely, leather gaiter or leatherette, possibly. Every time they release a new model, they just make it that bit better. It's comfortable. You've got everything you need at your fingertips, including cruise control here on this stalk. Full digital cluster gives you everything from economy through to lots of information about your vehicle. Now, the one thing you have to remember is there is no MG pilot on this, meaning no adaptive cruise, but you do get a feral safety sweep. Start stop button here. These are your buttons for tilt and slide. So yeah, it does fully open. And yes, you do have a power blind on it. 12 volt socket, two USBs, two cup holders, decent sized door pocket and glove box. Yeah, not a bad size. Though you just love the Battersea blue, especially when it's combined with these chrome door handles. Door opens nice and wide. And yet again, a well-finished door card. Hard plastics at the top, but you see the brushed metal, decent door pocket, an electric window. Climbing in, wow. This is a good wide opening. And just look at this. Considering the seat set up for me at six foot three, I've got very good leg room and I can get my feet under the seats as well. Headroom, even with a panoramic, if I'm sat as bolt upright as possible, I only touch ever so slightly if I lean to the right. Impressive. Mind you, why am I surprised? The amount of times I've been in the ZS, and that's the thing. The practicality, they just keep the same. Also, in the rear, you get a grab handle. Comfortable, lots of room. Even the headliner's light, but because you've got no privacy glass, it's light and airy. My airline's good. I can see out at about this point. So even though it's got that sloping roof line, it doesn't actually do anything to this vision or any of my headroom. That's always good to see. I do like the fact that you've got a padded armrest. Makes it nice and comfortable. And if you've noticed, the seats are raised quite a bit. So you've got a better view to the front. Trimmed well, sporty styling, matches the front. And I suppose they've got an element of bucket to them. Four people on a long journey, you'd be very happy. It would have been nice to see an armrest, but you don't really expect it. Now you will find hard touches in the back, but there's not as many as you'd expect. Raised transmission tunnel, doesn't really limit space. You could also put like a small hold all there. Pockets on the back of the seats, storage point here, two USBs. And the one thing that is missing is a rear light. And finally, isofix points on the back of the seats and airbags around the vehicle. Pop the boot is nice and easy. Just hold down on lock on the key fob. Even when locked, it will release. 
I think this is clever too. Decent sized boot. And also you have a false floor. Meaning this colossal lip that you've got here is pretty much eliminated. Far easier to load into. But you've got that depth if you need it. One thing to note with the false floor is don't put too much weight on it because it may bend. I, I mean, I'm talking shed loads of gravel. It's not going to bend under normal shopping and things like that. Some rather clever netting here. Storage point on the left hand side and the right hand side. Tire inflation kit. You'll also notice it hasn't unlocked any of the doors. So I have to use the unlock. To release this, just literally pull up this tab. Now look. This is pretty much flat, and with the false floor at this height, it's quite level, which makes it far easier to load. Slight gap here, but nothing that's going to be too invasive. Welcome behind the wheel of the MG ZS. One litre three cylinder turbocharged with the manual gearbox. This is six speed. The likelihood is you'll know that this engine's actually a GM unit. Clear. And we first experienced it around four years ago in the Corsa Turbo. And the combination is, well, it's a good one. And when this first launched, you could only get the automatic with the one litre. You get a manual in the 1.5, but that was only five speed. love the rasp of the three cylinder there's just something sporty about them economy i'd probably get 35 to 37 to the gallon super eco run closer to 42 which isn't that far off the 1.5 manual so what is it that would make you want this over that, especially paying that extra price? Well, I find that in comparison to the 1.5, it's a smoother engine, it's a smoother drive. Well, Annabelle, yeah, spot on. It's a smoother engine. The fact that it's turbocharged means it actually gets to speed a bit quicker. Now, strangely, the 0 to 60 is slower, but I would assume getting to 30 is considerably quicker. Invariably, as it's a three-cylinder, if you're in the wrong gear at the wrong time, you will know about it. There will be absolutely no power there until the turbo goes, actually, let's go. Let's try fourth now and demonstrate. Yeah, nothing. And now it's picking up. Now the ZS manual has no MG Pilot. In fact, you won't actually find MG Pilot outside of the EV range, meaning we don't get adaptive cruise. But they have carried over some of the safety. Rear driving assist, cross traffic monitoring, we've even got lane keep assist. The drive itself is far smoother, like Annabelle mentioned. The acceleration's good. You've got this lovely short shift as well. Steering's nice and direct, gives good feedback. And I can have some fun on a back lane. Body roll, yeah, yeah, you've definitely got it. Well, it is an SUV. Well, that's it. It's got a fair bit of bounce to it. But at no point does it feel unhinged. It's well planted considering its ride height. Because it is quite a tall vehicle. Yeah. And it's quite high off the road too. Brakes, very good. And weirdly, you end up with an old school handbrake, but it does come with hill start assist. So that's awesome. Suspension, well, combined with that body roll, it makes it very comfortable. It just gobbles up potholes. Because of that, it's not the tightest handling vehicle in the world. As I mentioned, you can still have some fun, but it does mean it's very comfortable for you and your passengers. You can see I've opted for the steering as dynamic. So you can make it a lot lighter using urban. You can just make it, in a word, normal with the normal setting. But dynamic just tightens it up, makes it feel weightier. Doesn't 
there's no actual button to do it, you have to do that through the infotainment screen. Refinement in the cabin isn't bad at all. You can hear the odd bit of tyre noise, but there's no wind noise whatsoever. And tyre noise is only when you're on a dodgy road anyway. Driving on A roads, it's enjoyable. It's got enough power if you need it. It can just plod along and say, fourth gear at around 35 miles an hour. It won't be the fastest off the mark at that revs, but if you drop a gear, you kick your turbo in again. Joining motorways, no problem. Our little roller coaster road. Let's see what second does until the people have gone. One place you do notice the flat spot is when pulling away, just give it a little more revs. But that's the same with pretty much any three cylinder. Well, the high ride height certainly works here, doesn't it, Annabelle? It does indeed. Because on site car park it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? <laughs> Look at this. Whee! Handles it with ease. Nice. If anything, you see manuals being taken out of cars, not put in. So the fact that you've now got the engine that we tested on that launch with a six-speed manual, top marks MG, great value, engaging driving, nice feel to that box, and a peppy GM engine. Yeah, economy is not the best. The price tag. I mean, these start at 16 grand. Well done, MG.